Hello and welcome back. This is going to be the last part of this video series on how to take this engine apart and retime it. So, um, you guys are not going to believe how easy to set the timing on this engine when you have the right tools and not mess around with anything else. This is the one and only way that it will work. Don't worry about top dead center. Don't worry about anything else. Just forget about all that stuff. All you need is, is the right tools. So this is a tool for the crankshaft, to put the crankshaft into the installation positions, I'm going to call it. So you just pull this lever, see this pin that sticks out, until the pin is flush. Like this. So the pin is out of the way. This tool will only fit one way and one way only. So you can't get it wrong. If you try to fit it, these two pins slides in these two holes. And if it doesn't go, turn it 180 degrees. Slides right on. Once it slides on, you turn this to release the pin. Now, you're going to turn this until the pin slides into the spot that it belongs to, to lock the crank in the right position. I spin this. Did you see that? As soon as it got where it needs to be, the pin slides in place. And now your crank is where it needs to be. Nothing else you need to do in the crankshaft at this point. Your crankshaft is lined up. The next step would be to line up your camshafts. And this is where this tool comes in handy. This tool also fits only one way. You have this bolt facing the top, and that's all you need to do. And then you take the big bolts, so if you try to put this in like this, you know it's wrong because the bolt's not facing the top, the bolt that holds the, the two pieces of the tool together. So all you need to do, if you look at this part right here where this slides into the cam, it's not really in the middle, it's, it's off center. You see that? So it's only going to fit on the cam one way. If you fit it wrong, it's not going to fit. So if you slide this on, see how it's not lined up? That's mean your tool is off or your camshaft needs to be turned. So. You turn your camshaft there. 180 degrees. Now it will fit just like that. It's even. So tool in here I'm trying to do this in one hand it's very difficult so once you line this up as I showed you you just screw in the bolt in the center just like that the same thing on the intake this doesn't fit, as you can see, then you rotate the camshaft 180 degrees until this fits with no problems. Like that. See that? And you can take your other bolt. And this is all can be done in the car. I know it seems like it's a tight space, but it can work. I have done more than I can count. I've done XC90s, XC60s, S60s, you name it, S80s, they all work. See that? So, we got the camshaft lined up. 
I'm not gonna bother torquing these because I'm not reusing this engine. Once you get this set up, what I usually do, I leave this bolt loose like this. So it gives me this little bit of wiggle room so the valve cover can go on a little bit easier. And I don't have to fight with this bolt because your final timing is not technically set until you put the chain on. So, but your base timing is done. It's that easy. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put the valve cover on. Just like that, your valve cover is on. And like I said, I don't bother with the other tools. What I do is I put the center bolts that we removed in by hand start the threads I put my bolts and cups so I don't lose them now guys you might ask these bolts on the valve cover all the same size all the same threads except for the two big bolts that removed here the 13 millimeters which is not hard to mistake the rest of the bolts all the same length all the same threads and all get torqued at 17 newt meters there's no special way of doing it um, I usually start in the middle and work my way out These bolts are 10 millimeters. So now what I do, start on one side. And guys, usually I don't use impact. I'm only, the only reason I'm using my impact because this engine, it will not be reused. So I really don't care. Um, otherwise, I don't use impact. I do it all by hand. Once you get to this point where you see a gap right here, but you don't have as much gap and you get in, and this gets a little tight, what I usually do, I take four or five more bolts and I put them somewhat in the corners to help push the outside of the cover in. Once you get to this point, then you know how to do the rest. Just put the rest of the bolts in, torque them in by hand, um, or at this point you can use an electronic uh, driver versus an impact so you don't have the hammering, uh, getting into the threads, damaging anything. You don't want to take that risk. Once you get to that point, then they all get torqued at 17 newton meters. Not much. Not much at all. Um, don't over torque them. Um, now the only sealer I use for this engine, the ones that you should only use, is the pink sealer, pink colored sealer. I have a tube right here. It's a chemical gasket. Um, this is you should get it from your um, Volvo dealer. Don't try to get RTV, it doesn't work. It's the opposite of what this is. Um, I've seen so many people use an RTV it's not worth it. It leaves too much goo. It clogs the passages for the oil. Not worth it. If you're doing all that work, it's not worth saving $10 for this tube. Um, now the oil pan, you can use RTV. It's fine. Oil pan is different than the valve cover. So now, once you get the, top, the valve cover torqued down and ready to go, all you have left is to put the inner timing cover. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm going to remove these gaskets so it's easier to slide this cover on. But in theory, um, it'll be a little more harder to slide this cover on. And I'm not going to bullshit you and tell you 
this cover just slides on like that that easy it doesn't slide on easy it's a uh, it's a little bit tricky um, usually what I do is I get this side on first um, if you have uh, somewhat of a um, liquid lubricant um, that it doesn't damage seals uh, try to use that it helps a lot um, so I slide this on and this gasket that goes here there's a pin that holds it in place um, you can use one of the long bolts here to kind of help you line up the seal so it doesn't fall on you um, I usually do it without doing that I've seen people putting a dap of RTV here and there to hold the seal in place that also works so I slide the back the front and usually this slides on like that and then these two bolts they also torqued at 17 newton meters they go right here it torques 40 if you remember the short one goes on the bottom the long one goes on top So I'm going to torque these two bolts and then we'll show you how to put the timing chain back on, the cams, and then how to finish your timing. Okay, so these two bolts are torqued. Uh, the torque specs on these two are 17 newton meters also, not much. So to install the chain, what I usually do is I get it on the bottom first of this pulley. Let me get the camera down under. Like this. And I get it under the, the bottom of the teeth right there. And then I slide it up. And then you slide the bottom and you put it over the rail. And then it goes right on. Then I grab my intake cam. Of course the one with the slot is your intake. The smooth one is your exhaust. Put the chain on the teeth. Slide it on, not all the way. I leave a little bit of oh, chain slid off the teeth. Right there, slide it on. Okay. Then I grab my exhaust, do the same thing. Slide the chain on the top, all the way to the bottom. And then turn it. Sometimes you have to slide the intake out to give yourself a little bit more room for the exhaust. So if you slide this all the way in, it makes this a little bit harder to slide onto the cam. So I slide it out a little bit like that, just at the edge, get this in, and then you can get both in. Now, your cams are in. You can put your bolts in. Don't torque them. Just spin them till the end. You want the bolt to hold the pulleys in place so they don't move. They move out. You want them to spin. You want them to be loose to be able to spin, but you don't want them to fall off the cam. So I put the bolts in, spin them all the way in by hand, and make sure they still move. You want the slack in the chain. You don't want it tight yet. If you remember, I told you I left this loose to make sure these cams kind of sit right it's easier to put the valve cover on with this loose. If you tighten this up, the cams 
gets stiff and it's hard to get the cover on. So what I do when you get the timing chain on and it's still loose, you tighten this bolt. So you take your ratchet, you tighten this bolt, make sure this bolt's tight. Also, you tighten these two bolts. These are 21 millimeters. You don't have to get them really tight, okay? They just need to be somewhat tight. They don't have to be super tight because then you might run into the chance of cracking the end of your camshaft. So just a quarter turn, half a turn, get a feel for it. Once it gets snug enough where it takes the play out from the, from the tool, that should be enough. So now we have our camshaft bolt tight. These two bolts are tight, the tool is in place, the crank tool is in place, it's locked. We have the chain on, we have the pulleys on but still loose. Now the final step to get this done and to get your timing 100% perfect is to pull this pin out of the tensioner. So go ahead and pull the pin out. Now the chain is tight. I pull on this guide up, make sure the chain is as tight as it can get, right? Now this is tight, this is tight. Now your engine is 100% timed. There is no other way to time this engine beside that. It's just that easy. You put the crank tool on, you put the cam tool on, and then you tighten your chain, okay? When your chain is tight, now you're done. Now, don't mistake and tighten these bolts before you tighten the chain, okay? Leave these bolts loose until the chain is tight. Once you get the chain tight, now the pulleys are locked where they need to be. Now you lock them to the cams by tightening the bolts. And to do that, we go back into using this tool. So now your pulleys are locked in the spot, the exact spot that they need to be on the cams. To lock them to the cams, you tighten these two bolts. Intake is 110 newton meters, exhaust is 75 newton meters, and then 90 degrees. And to tighten them, you have to use also this tool. It's used to loosen the bolts and to torque the bolts. The same way we put the tool on, you put it back on, you lock this nut, and then you tighten it. Don't think that because you have this tool on here that you don't need that tool. This tool is not designed to hold the cams in place. What will happen, you will crack the end of your camshaft. Don't do that. The old five cylinders like this engine, it's designed for that. The back tool is designed to hold the cam in place and to lock it for the timing position. For the six cylinder engines, it's not. It's designed only to hold it into the timing position. And this tool is designed to lock the cams, pulleys together to torque the bolts. So now once you torque these bolts, your engine is timed. Once you torque these bolts, they recommend to wait about two hours for the pink sealer to cure. After two hours, you can crank your engine over two turns and make sure it doesn't bind or anything. Now if it binds, or it doesn't turn, it's one of two things. First, is you missed a step on the timing. Either you're in your crank, or in your cams, or in the installing these pulleys. The second thing, you have internal damage in your engine, whether in the crank bearings, or in your cylinder heads in the valves. That's the only two things that could cause the engine not to spin. Uh, depending on what kind of work you did to the engine. Now, if you're only resealing the valve cover because of the leak, oil leak, then you're more likely not going to run into this issue. So, you take the valve cover off, you reseal it, you put the cams back in it, you time it as I showed you, and you will have no problem. And from this point on, the only thing you got left to do is to install your outer cover. And this is the seal that goes on it goes on the outside and install the cover. Now, 
to install this cover, you have to remove this gasket. Remove it. There's special tools to line this cover up. Okay. And also, when you remove this cover, the inner cover, there's uh, sleeves that go right here in that gap. Very hard to see right there. Okay. You spin these sleeves with an Allen wrench. It goes one here and one on the bottom. Okay. You spin them by hand until they bottom out. And that's all you do with them. You loosen them after taking the cover off. When you put the new cover on, you turn them by hand until they bottom out. That's it, by hand. Don't use any tools, by hand. Once they bottom out, you're done. Um, and then you can put the 10 millimeter bolts through them after you put this cover on, and you're done. And the reason of these, because you have the cylinder head uh, surface, then you have the valve cover surface and the reed unit surface. You have three different levels and the only way to line this cover up with all with the two separate units is by using these sleeves. You just turn them in to line everything up. If you don't and you torque these it will push this cover inward or outward depending on which way these uh, sleeves are and then you might run into a problem with the seal down here it's gonna leak oil. So. I'm going to pause this video, I'm going to remove that seal from the outer cover to show you how to put it on with the tool and then I'll show you the special tool to install that seal which is you have to use a new one, you cannot reuse the old one. But there's a special tool to put the seal, it's not a regular seal, it's a reverse lip seal um, that it needs also a special tool to put it in place. So I'm going to pause the video, remove the seal and come back when I'm done. So I removed the seal off the cover. It's very simple to install this cover. You just put it back on. Just put it back on. Now to line it up, there's the tools we talked about. This is one of them. This slides on the bottom here, like that. And this tool slides on the top. Now, some of the aftermarket tools doesn't have this fancy looking thing with the bullet with the bolt holes, which is it would work fine too. I never put the bolts in here. It's pointless. So now when you do that, now your cover's lined up. Now what you do is you install first these three bolts. You see it right down here one two three you install these first you torque them to 17 newton meters and then you go around and you install the rest of the bolts and remember some of them are short some of them are long once you do that then you install the two big 10 millimeter bolts in here after you spin the sleeve to bottom it out once all that installed then you're done I'm not going to install any of these bolts, but I'm just going to put these three to hold the cover so I can show you how to put the seal in place. So, covers lined up, you remove your tools. It's time to put the seal on. And this is when this tool comes in handy. Okay. Well, this tool, this is your seal. Reverse lip seal. Okay. So if you don't use the tool and you put the seal on, or you just don't take it out, that lip, it will not be on the inside anymore, it will get pushed to the outside, and that would leak oil. So what this tool does, when you install it, 
pushes the lip in the right direction and it slides it on the tool. Then you take this cone and if you lose this cone, this tool is useless. So don't lose it. You screw this onto the reed unit shaft and you slide the seal in place. Sometimes a little bit harder, so you just spin this nut until the seal bottoms out. Once the bottom's out, you take the tool out. And then your seal is installed, and the lip is facing the right direction, to the inside, not the outside. Once you do that, then the job is over. And the rest, just to put button everything back up and finish the rest of the job, once you get everything in there, then you'll be ready to start the engine. And you can be sure your timing is 100% correct. Like I said, if the engine doesn't spin, it locks up, you have something else going on. If you follow these uh, steps, it's very simple, very easy as you can see. Two tools in the back and you're done. You line them up in the back right, you put the timing chain, you put the pulleys on, you get the chain tight, and then you torque the bolts and you're done. Thank you for all the subscribers. I want to thank all the subscribers. Um, I try to do this as the best as I can with the time I have. My schedule is very busy. I try to do the best I can. I hope this video was helpful. Um, I don't do much editing. I, I show it as I do it. Um, I don't have the time to sit and waste hours upon hours on editing videos, so I upload them pretty much as fast as I can. I only cut the parts that it's just useless, so it makes the upload a little bit quicker. Um, so I appreciate all the supporters. I appreciate everybody who appreciates what I do. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave a comment below. I will get back to you.